In this video I'm going to show you how to make navigation buttons in Animate CC. I'm going to show you how to make buttons that navigate to various frames, to various scenes and to the World Wide Web using ActionScript 3. This is an example animation I've got. Uh, it's got two scenes in it. The first scene just has three cells of animation or three frames. It has a layer, a background layer which changes on each of these frames so that you can tell the difference between them. I have a, a button layer which has these four buttons in it. The incidence of the various buttons here, I've got a blue button called blue button. The reason I'm telling you na these names is these names will be referred to in the action script. The red button is called red button, the incidence of that particular button. Yellow button is called yellow and the last one is called arrow button. And then I have a layer for my action script. My second scene has a little bit of an animation to it. It has an arrow button that's called arrow button 2. I've renamed these buttons as well. Only the arrow, I've only written code for the arrow button too. And then on the very last cell of that animation, I have some action script. So let's go back to the first scene and show you what this animation does when I run it. So I'll test it. So the buttons will jump to the various frames. So the blue button goes to the blue frame, yellow goes to the yellow frame. The play button will go to and play the second scene and then it will get this green button which will jump to the World Wide Web. So let's have a look at how this script works. So this is my first um, scene. If I right click on the actions layer, click on actions which is on the bottom. You can't see it because my screen is cut off. It'll show you the action script. This first line of text, you can type it in if you want. Um, it'll make the Animate CC we are to have mouse events, but if you don't type it in the moment you put a mouse event in, it'll just automatically put it in there for you. The second line of text stops the animation. This particular animation is only three frames and I don't want it to play, so I've made it automatically stop right from the beginning. These next four layers are eventlessness for each of the buttons. So what that does is it makes Animate CC look at the buttons and see if something's happening with them. So for these particular buttons, I've added an, so the, these are the names of the incidences of those buttons which I referred to before. I've added an event listener to that, so it's going to look at that button to check whether things are happening to it. It's a mouse event, so something's going to happen with the mouse, um, and it's mouse up. So what that means is someone's clicked on that button and released. And what it will do is it'll run this um, function. A function is a bit of code that you can reuse and call. It'll sit there and do nothing until it's called, but when it's called, it'll run a bit of code. So if the blue button will run the blue frame code, and that's just a name. I could have called that whatever I wanted to call it. The red button will run the red frame function. So the first function for the blue frame, so it's I called it a function so that the code knows it's a function. I've named it blue frame. It's an event, and it's a mouse event. This void section, you can put it in or not put it in. Basically, it means that uh, most functions will return a value. This one doesn't. Um, so putting void tells um, Animate CC that it doesn't have to look for a value to come back. So it makes it run slightly faster. But in practical terms, it probably won't make any difference for an animation that you might likely to be making. In between the curly brackets, the code that's actually going to run. So this is the, the piece of script that it's going to run. And what this does is it'll go to and stop, so it will stop once it hits this frame, and it's going to go to the first frame in this particular case. The second function does pretty much exactly the same thing for the uh, red button. So the red button runs this function. This function is called red frame. I could have called it whatever I want, but that's what I called it. It's an event, it's a mouse event, and then in between these curly brackets is the code, and what this code tells it to do is jump to and stop to on frame two. And the yellow frame does the same thing with um, to frame three. The last button, the arrow button, is slightly different. The code's pretty much the same apart from the go to part of it. This one is go to and play because I want it to play the next scene. This is the cell of the scene that it's going to go to, and this is the name of the scene that it's going to go to. It has to be in quotes. So it's going to go to and play the first frame of scene two. So scene two. doesn't have any code until the very last frame. I did that so that um, if you clicked on this button while it was moving or when it was over here it wouldn't activate, it 
would wait, wait until you got to the end. On the very last frame, I can right click on Actions, I have this bit of code. First two lines, like in the last um, incidents, um, you can type them in if you want, but it will actually add them to um, in there for you. Um, the moment you the first one will add the moment you put a mouse event in, it will add that bit of code in there, and the second one it will add once you've put this bit of code to put a URL in it. Uh, the stop is to stop it once it hits the end, end of the animation. Arrow button two is what I call that large arrow. Adds an event listener, mouse up event and it's going to run this function. So exactly the same as those other buttons, the only difference is the code looks a little bit different. So it's going to nav navigate to a URL, so that's three words, navigate to URL, a new URL request, and then in quotes, the actual H um, link that you want to have it jump to, and this is just telling it to open a new um, web page to load that web event. And that's how all these codes work. The end.